using sound to see. It's an extraordinary ability, and many blind people use the technique called echolocation to help them get around safely. Now, scientists in Canada have identified which part of the brain is used by people who have this amazing ability. Just like bats or dolphins, they can bounce sound waves off their surroundings, and then listening to the echoes can see the world around them. Chris Muldoon is the manager of the Royal Society for the Blind's guide dog service, and he joins me now from Adelaide.、Uh, so, Chris Muldoon, first of all, roughly what proportion of blind people have this ability? Have the basic innate skills, and like most skills, it needs to be trained. So, if you were looking at people who were, say, congenitally blind, they may have a more advanced, developed skill sense, and people who are adventitiously blind or lose their sight later in life may have to develop. That echolocation facet, but、um, it's very difficult to put numbers on. I think most vision impaired people would use some element of echolocation in some part of their day. So, can you just talk us through how it works? Well, essentially, what happens with echolocation is you you can emit or you can receive a series of sounds, and the sounds travel obviously in wave patterns. And when they hit an object or a solid object, they'll actually reflect back to you. And depending on how far away you are from the object or how close you are to the object, would give you some sense of space and size around you, and and also give you a sense of awareness about the environment. So it's it's quite a, a, a well developed skill,、um, in so much that if you use it constantly, you will develop that skill. Even more. But anybody can be taught it. Is that right?、Um, you can. You can teach. You can teach people this advanced skill, and especially if it's in an area of the brain that's receptive to training. Then, yep, you can develop the skill. It, it may not be for everyone because for some people,、uh, the additional skills training takes a lot of effort and a lot of、um, application. And it can be done in conjunction with the mobility aids. So, for example, if the person is using a long cane, you could tap the long cane on the ground and use the sound waves from the long cane to pick up the size of the room you're in, or to pick up the size of the environment, or even to what we call shoreline to move along the side of a wall that would give you the sense of space and size of the wall next year. It's, it's a very useful skill. Now, scientists、uh, in Canada have now pinpointed the part of the brain. That is used, that is、uh, stimulated during echolocation, and it's the part usually associated with with sight. So, how will that knowledge help people、uh, improve their skills on this and make them more sophisticated, perhaps? Yeah. Well, I, th- I think the same argument holds that if you can increase the training area of the brain, which is possible to do, and people are receptive to that, then you are more likely to to pick up an additional skill. And the skill echolocation in conjunction with using residual vision, the little bit of vision you've got le- left. Or even for people who are totally blind, it means that you can advance that skill to points where you're travelling more independently, or you're travelling more safely and independently. It's a it's a, it's a it's a skill that's been around for a long time, but but as it develops, clients develop or or people who are blind or vision impaired develop the additional skills, which means they, they're safer. And safety is is paramount when you're travelling without sight. Chris Muldoon, thank you.